Hi, Happy New Year. Can you believe 2021 has finally arrived? May God grace us with hope and strength and health in this coming year. I'm Eugene Scott, and we're St. James Presbyterian Church. We're delighted that you're here worshiping with us this morning, worshiping Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who's never put off by what the world has to offer. He's never surprised, never shocked, but always willing and open to have us enter his presence in worship. And so let's do that together this morning. We also have several things going on midweek that, and even on Sundays that you can take part in. We have a Sunday Zoom watch party that begins at nine o'clock Every Sunday morning, we're through Zoom, people gather together and, and uh, participate in our worship services together in that way. If you need more information about how to do that, you can contact Becky at sjpress.org, and she can give you all the information needed. Also, beginning on January 7th, on Thursday evenings, running through February 11th, we're going to be studying Philip Yancey's book, Prayer, does it make any difference? Philip Yancey is an award-winning author, just so kind and calm and intelligent. We'll be watching his videos and I'll be leading a discussion uh, through the book and around the videos each Thursday night at seven, as I say. We'll explore prayer, which is the heartbeat, the very foundation of our relationship with God. No question will go unexplored. Yancey is so good at asking and addressing, maybe not fully answering, but addressing even the most difficult questions about prayer, such as, does it make any difference? So please join us for that, if you will. Our preschool, also on January 5th, which is a Tuesday, will uh, have a fundraiser through Romano's. And it, when you go to Romano's and uh, check out, uh, the, some of your proceeds will, the proceeds will be donated to St. James Preschool. That's from 11 a.m. to close, carry out only. And um, it's going to be a great way to give to our kids in this coming year. We have a lot of things going on. If you want to ask for prayer, that's one of our greatest gifts is that we can lift up together our needs our praises to god in prayer and so please let us know if you have any prayer needs in this day or in the coming weeks to start this year off with god uh, walking before us beside us and behind us in genesis 27 isaac blesses his son jacob the blessing is so beautiful, he says to Jacob, may God give you heaven's dew and earth's richness, an abundance of grain and new wine. Jacob didn't deserve that blessing, but received it nonetheless, and God fulfilled it. This is because God's mercy is never ending. It's new every morning and every year. Whether we feel like we have earned his blessing or not, God continuously brings it in every sunrise and sunset, in every new year. And so let's together this morning worship this God, this God of grace, this God of mercy, this God of unending love, who's starting this year off with us. Let's worship God.
Lord, we thank you for this time of worship, this opportunity to express our love and gratitude to you, our mighty King. We pray that you continue to move through us, guiding our steps, and providing for all of our needs. We are in awe of your majesty and pray that our joy in you radiates through everything we do. Thank you so much for being our incredible, loving Father. In your name we pray. Good morning, St. James. My name is Craig Thai, and I'm the Associate Pastor, and I'm so happy to get to pray with you this morning. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, thank you for this time, this place, this space, and this new year. Lord, you are the creator and sustainer of life and the universe. You are constantly renewing everything in creation. You were before all things, and you hold all things together. 
We are grateful for your merciful hand in sustaining all creation. Lord, we find peace in the knowledge that you are truly in control. As we enter this new year, Lord, we ask that your spirit guides us through each of our steps. We pray that our hearts will desire you deeply above everything else this year. That you, Lord, will be our priority. We pray to you that when we fall away from keeping you first in our heart, that you will provide us with a merciful reminder of your love and care. Just as we must be born again to inherit the kingdom of God, we pray to you for renewal this year. Through renewal, we pray to strengthen our hearts in you and to allow us to use that heart to best serve you and to humble ourselves so we can best serve others to love our neighbor. Increase our appetite for your word this year, Lord. Lord, we pray for our ministry partners as we enter into 2021. We pray that they may continue doing your important work, that they can grow your kingdom and share the good news of Jesus to the whole world. Keep watch over them, protect them, and strengthen them through your everlasting love. Lord, we pray for all of those in our congregation, our communities, our families, friends, and the greater world who are sick and suffering. You are the great physician, able to work wonders and do the impossible. We pray for their healing, their comfort, and that all who suffer may experience your loving embrace. As we enter into a new year, we pray that our world will be less divided and more united, together as children of God. Lord, keep us far from the intent of the enemy. Remove from our hearts the inclination and desire to sin. Allow us to turn to our neighbor and our enemies in forgiveness, mercy, and repentance. Just as you approach us with mercy and forgiveness when we sin and repent. Thank you, Lord, for drawing us to you, for making us a new creation in Christ and giving us a new heart and a new life. I prayerfully ask you to remind us to stay strong and courageous despite what the world may bring that we need not be afraid or dismayed, but instead in a place of peace and rest because we know that you are always with us. Let us now take a moment for personal prayer and confession. Now, Lord, we pray in the way that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So Jackson, I have a fun game that I thought we could play today. It's a fl I made flashcards, and it's a guess the superhero game. So I'm going to read you a clue, and you have to guess which superhero I'm talking about. Does that sound good? That sounds good. Okay. The first superhero is known for having very strong morals. Jesus. 
I was thinking Captain America, but Jesus. Yeah, he had strong morals. Okay, that was good. Um, the second one, this one travels all over the world to teach other people how to help each other and be tolerant. Jesus, he, he went all over the world teaching people good from bad, remember? And he told his disciples also to teach. Oh, that's right. I was thinking Wonder Woman, but your answer is honestly a lot better. Okay, so here's one. This superhero stands for hope in a world filled with hate. Jesus, he, er, he was in a world full of hate. Everyone was killing each other back then bec for, because they were mean. So when they were mad, they killed each other. But, but when, they, when Jesus came, they felt, a few people felt hope. Wow, that's really true. I was thinking Superman, but Jesus is a much better answer. Um, okay, so this one always puts others first and before themselves and is even willing to sacrifice their own life if it means helping another person. Jesus, he, he died on the cross for, for, for all of us, not just one person, everyone. Oh my gosh, that's so true. I never even thought about that. I was thinking Captain America, but you're right. Jesus was actually the first one to do that, wasn't he? So this one has the power of omnilingualism, the power to speak every language. Jesus, remember when he gave, he put the fires over his disciples' head and they could speak a lot of languages? Oh wow, you're right, I was thinking Wonder Woman, but yes, Jesus actually, yes. and God and the Holy Spirit created omnilingualism. Yeah, he wow. can speak every language. Okay, this one is a superhuman and great leader that everyone turns to because they're known for their good judgment and they're respected and feared. I am thinking of... Jesus. I was going to say Captain America. Jesus. But he yeah. was known for his good judgment, right? Yeah. Yeah, and pe did people fear him at all? Yes, they feared him a lot. Why? Because of his powers. What powers? All of them. To raise people from the dead, stuff like that. Oh, that's right. Who did he raise from the dead? Lazarus and the girl. Oh, that's right. That's awesome. Um, so the last one, this one has experienced great suffering and they use their powers to prevent people from having to endure the same pain they have. I'm thinking of... Jesus! I was gonna say Spider-Man. No, Jesus, he died he, on the cross and when uh, Peter chopped one of the soldier's ears off, he replaced it back then and told Peter, do not hurt any of these people. These are my children. You're right, and he went through more suffering than anybody yeah. did, and he did that for all of us, didn't all he? All of our wounds combined that we've had is not still not even close to as much as he suffered. Well, buddy, I think you just reinvented this entire flashcard game, as well as the word superhero. Good job. Yeah, the whole thing means how it's called. Change it to the Jesus game, okay? <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. Today we're covering some sections from the Gospel of Luke, and did you know that the word gospel means good news? So the Gospel of Luke is interesting because it's not just a list of teachings of things we need to do to be good enough. Instead, it's a story. The story of Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection. And the good news is it isn't just a list of things we need to do, but instead the story of what God has already done for us, like send us the ultimate superhero, Jesus. The next time you watch a movie about superheroes, think of it this way. It's not that Jesus has the same quality as, as these superheroes. Instead, these superheroes have the same qualities as Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for sending us the ultimate superhero, your son, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Happy New Year. Have a great day. Happy New Year, St. James. We are so grateful for your continued financial support of our church and our ministries. It is because of you that we are able to change lives, both locally and globally. Paul, in his letter to the church in Corinth in 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. As you prayerfully contemplate your giving this year, I would implore you to do it from a place of joy. When you give from a place of joy, you are reminded of what God graciously gives you. Thus, our giving becomes an outward expression of our trust in God and 
our thanksgiving for his ever-renewing glory to us. Now, friends, is the time for the offering. My name is Wayne Darbone. I'm pastor here at St. James, and I want to invite you to join me as we dive into God's Word with the first four verses of the Gospel of Luke, Luke 1, 1 through 4. Hear God's Word. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the Word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Will you join me in prayer? Almighty God, thank you for your word. Thank you for this new year and all that we have ahead for us. And God, as we begin this year, fill us with your good news that we can live it out in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Happy New Year. We made it. If we're watching this, we have made it from 2020 to 2021. That I don't know how many times I've heard people say over the last several months, we can't wait to get out of 2020 and into 2021, to turn the page of the calendar, to turn the page of the chapter and make our way into this new year. And what's the main reason people have been saying that? Well, in my experience, people have been saying that because they've thought that certainly as we move into 2021, it can't be as bad as 2020 was. And I wonder as we move into this new year, is that the best we can do? Is that the best we can do moving into a new year saying, well, at least it probably won't be as bad as last year was. You see, I believe we can do better. I believe we have reason for good news. And I think there's nothing more that we need, that the world needs right now, than good news. In fact, I'm wondering, do you need good news today? Or do you know somebody who needs good news? I encourage you to share this message and series with them, because as we begin this new year, we're beginning a new series called Good News. The Good News of Jesus, the greatest news the world has ever known, and how that good news is helpful and practical, and how we can live out our lives no matter what 2021 brings our way. So today as we begin looking in the Gospel of Luke and making our way through the Gospel of Luke in our series, we're going to look at, at that the good news is true, that good news is a story, and that makes it good news. And the good news has a hero. And so let's dive in. Luke begins by saying that the good news that we have is true. He says, many have undertaken to drop an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who were the first eyewitnesses and servants of the word. And with this in mind, Luke says, I have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, and I'm writing it to you, O Theophilus. So Luke is writing this to somebody named Theophilus. And I love his name. It means lover of God. And some have suggested that Luke is writing this to anybody who is or wants to be a lover of God. 
But most scholars, and I agree, that believe that there was an actual person named Theophilus, somebody who was investigating the story of Jesus, investigating who Jesus was. And maybe that's you today, wanting to know understanding of who Jesus is. And the first thing Luke tells us is that this story is true, that there were many accounts given, many accounts given of Jesus' life that people have written, but there were also eyewitnesses. And not only were there eyewitnesses, but that Luke has taken a great, worked very hard to take painstaking detail about the truth about Jesus' life. And all of this is important because what Luke is telling us is good news is not good if it's not true. Let me say that again. Any good news is not actually good if it's not true. That we need good news that is true. And Luke is saying that there is there are eyewitnesses, there are detailed accounts. And Luke, like Mark and Matthew before him, wrote the story of Jesus out just shortly after Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. That there were people still alive who experienced it, that there were these eyewitnesses. For example, when, when Luke tells about the story when Jesus feeds 5,000 men and all the others who were there, there were people who were there. If it wasn't true, there would be people who would say, you know, I tracked Jesus' life pretty closely, and that just didn't happen. Or, or there would be, if it did happen, but it happened differently than Luke, how Luke presented it here, they would say that's, it happened, but that's not exactly how it happened. But not only for challenges, it also helped to verify that for those who were there, they, they could say, you know, I was there, and that's exactly how it happened. There are others who wrote stories about Jesus' life that didn't last because they couldn't be verified. But Luke takes great effort as a physician, somebody who pays attention to detail, to tell the story accurately so that we can know it's true. He says, I write this so you can know with certain, O Theophilus. And I think this is important. It's important that we know that the gospel is true, that the good news is true. And as, as we understand it's, that it's truth that we can base our lives on it, I want to encourage you to today because it's true. Don't believe the gospel because it meets your needs, even though the gospel does and will meet your needs. Don't even believe the gospel because the gospel will lead you into an intimate relationship with Almighty God through Jesus Christ that will transform your life. It will do that. But don't believe the gospel because of the things it will do for you. Believe the gospel and you can believe the gospel because it's true. And that's important in these days. There are some people who say, you know, I don't know if it's true or not. I just know it works for me. And we just count truth as a matter of perspective. That what's true for you is true for you, and what's true for me is true for me. But what we need is good news that is true. And so what Luke is telling us is that unless it's true, unless it's true for everybody, it's not helpful to anybody. Unless the good news is true for everybody, unless it actually happened, it's not helpful for anyone. And the good news is that the gospel is true. But secondly, Luke makes it clear as he begins that, that the gospel is good news because it's a story. And the fact that it's a story makes it even better news. Now, what do I mean by that? Twice in these beginning four verses, Luke says, I give an account. I am telling you the story of Jesus' life. And that's important because many people look at Jesus as the founder of a religion, and the founder of every religion out there has a book. And that book is filled with teachings. And the goal of the teachings is for people to accomplish what is meant to be accomplished by that religion. But you see, the Gospels, the Gospel of Luke and the other three, 
uh, Mark, Matthew, and John. And the Bible as a whole is not meant to be a list, a, a collection of Jesus' teachings. Instead, it's a story. Now, why does that matter? It matters because we respond differently to teaching than we respond to stories. And here's one reason. The onus of teaching is on the student to apply what they've learned in order to accomplish what they're wanting to accomplish. Let me say that again. The onus of teaching is on the student to apply what they've learned in order to work hard and accomplish what they're wanting to accomplish. So for example, I have a friend of mine who just took a master class in grilling and smoking meat. And he loved it. He said it changed his life. Now that he's completed the class, he's received the teaching, the onus is now on him to work hard and apply the teaching that he's experienced to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. That's true of any teaching. And that's true of any religion. Because religion says, here are the things that we must do, the teachings we must follow in order to accomplish what we want to accomplish, to be able to experience peace in our lives, in order to have a relationship with God. But you see, the good news is that Luke doesn't give the gospel of Jesus as a list of Jesus' teachings. He doesn't say, oh, Theophilus, here is a compendium. Here's a list of all of Jesus' teachings for you to follow. No, he said, I give an account. I tell you the story of Jesus. You see, because we respond differently to a story than to teachings. Where teachings put the onus on us to work hard and accomplish, apply the teachings to accomplish what we want to accomplish. The story is something that we receive and tells us what somebody else has done. You see, the good news of the gospel isn't that it's filled with teachings that we need to try to keep in order to be good enough for God, but it tells us the story of what God has done for us through Jesus. Isn't that great news? That the gospel means we are saved by grace. We are not saved by our actions in response to Jesus' teachings. Instead, we are saved by Jesus' actions in what he has done for us. What he has done for us in the incarnation that we've just celebrated at Christmas. What he's done for us through his teaching and his miracles. You see, Jesus' teaching are included in the Gospels, but they have their meaning and power in the context of his life and what he accomplished for us, ultimately on the cross and in his resurrection. I love at the end of Jesus' life, after he was crucified and, and buried and then rose again, we're told in Luke chapter 24 that there were two disciples walking along the road. And they were talking, and they were talking animately. They were, they were excited, and they had a stranger come up to them and join them as they were walking. And the stranger asked them, what are you talking about? And, they, and the two looked at him and said, what do you mean, what are we talking about? We're talking about what everybody's talking about. That there was a guy who came, and, and we were sure he was going to be the Savior. He was going to redeem Israel. He was going to be the Messiah. And yet, they killed him, and he was crucified on the cross, and he was sealed in the tomb. And yet, some of our friends went to go visit him in the tomb, and the tomb is now empty, and we're not sure what to make of it. And then Jesus, who is that stranger who had joined them on the road, said this in Luke 24. He said, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And then we're told as they make their way to the village, they break bread and they discover that it was Jesus. Do you see what Jesus did? Jesus shared the gospel by telling the story the story of what God had been up to from Genesis and then now all the way through Revelation. That the good news is a story, not just a list of teachings, 
a story that declares the good news of what God has done through Jesus. And it's good news, Luke tells us, because there's a hero in the story. We're told as the story unfolds and as you and I are going to experience in these coming weeks, that as the story unfolds, that there is a hero to that story. There is one that we can turn to and trust, who is Jesus. I was reminded of this recently when I was reminded of a conversation that the two most read authors in the English-speaking world of the 20th century had with each other. Imagine this. The two most read authors in the English-speaking world of the last century were taking a walk together. It was J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis. Tolkien was a Christian. Lewis was an atheist. And as they were taking this long walk, Lewis said something along the lines of, you know, I'm, I am stirred so deeply by those great old stories with that ancient hero who sweeps in and saves the day. And he said, they stir me so much, but it's too bad they're all myths. And Tolkien looked at him and he said, they're not all myths. He said, you know, the story of Sleeping Beauty the story of Sleeping Beauty that, that points to the great truth that true love can break the spell of evil on people's lives. Or the story of the beauty and the beast that points to that great truth that sacrificial love can transform something horrible that takes place. And then Tolkien continued and said, and there's that other great story, the greatest of all stories, that story of Jesus. Jesus, who was born and laid in that humble manger. Jesus, who was pursued in an attempt to, to, that Jesus would be killed by a king who was after him, but escaped narrowly. Jesus, who grew up and took on all of the great oppressive forces of evil, and also those great oppressive forces of evil took him on and killed him. But the story wasn't over. Jesus rose from the dead, conquering death and evil once and for all. And then Tolkien turned to Lewis and said, you see, that's the beauty of the gospel. That Jesus is not one more story that points to those great truths. But Jesus is instead the great truth himself that all those stories point to. Jesus is the prince whose true love is able to overcome that evil curse in people's lives. Jesus is the beauty who through his sacrificial love is able to conquer the powers of evil and transform those horrible things that takes place that take place in our lives that Jesus is that hero of heroes in the grand story in the grand story of the world in his story in his story he is the hero of heroes who is able to slay the great dragon he is the one who is able to put down the villain of evil and to wipe away every tear. That Jesus is the hero of heroes. And he's not only the Bible's hero. He's not only the gospel's hero. He's not only the hero of the world and the hero of history. But he can be your hero. He can be the hero who walks with you and brings salvation. For we don't need a teacher. We need a savior. And our hero is Jesus. And that is good news. Will you pray with me, please? Almighty God, we thank you. We thank you for the good news that is true that we can bank our lives on. And we thank you, Lord, that your good news is not a list of rules or a list 
of teaching that somehow we need to accomplish on our own effort and our own strength. But the good news is the story of your saving work, your saving action on our behalf, that we are saved by grace through your sacrificial love. Thank you, Jesus, as we come to the table now and celebrate and recognize that you are our hero. You are our Savior. And so, God, help us trust you as we come to the table and acknowledge your saving work on our behalf as we enter this new year in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to invite you now to enter into a time of communion. If you need a moment to pause the video and collect your elements, feel free to do that. As we gather around the table, in our own homes or wherever we may be, we gather around Jesus' table, that he is able to gather us together, that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant, the new promise, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, You proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for this feast of your grace. We pray, Lord, you would meet us here in the intimacy of the time, in the unfolding of your story in our lives and through us. Holy Spirit, come and move among us as we receive now your body and blood as your body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.
Would you join me in prayer, please? Almighty God, one bread and one body. You have made us one, uniting us together through Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you that whatever this year holds, we do so together as your body. We do it with you. And so, Lord, help us now as we live our lives singing with great joy that you are the hero, that you rule the world with truth and grace. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So now we go out together, joy to the world, in a new year, his unfolding story happening through us, and there's no telling the possibilities, because he is able. He is able to do immeasurably more than all that we can ask or imagine, according to his power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. He rules the world.